This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Yeah, so this is a chronulator kit that I sell. It's um, just a basic clock kit, but um, it's more designed for learning how to solder. And at the end, you wind up with something that's actually very useful, a clock that you can set up on your mantle and uh, admire for years to come. Uh, a lot of people that I've sold kits to, they will create their own cases for it. So they'll do all sorts of fancy laser cut plastic, or maybe they'll find a, an old, like a cigar box and build it into a cigar box. Uh, there's tons of different things people have, have done with it. Uh, there's even a guy in France who went and did a bunch of work with uh, brass etching and some like uh, furniture, uh, like a drawer handle knobs and did this absolutely amazing clock that uh, it doesn't look anything like this. Uh, he completely reinvented it, but it was just amazing. So the, components. The, the basic idea is uh, you've got a, an 8-bit microcontroller. This is actually the same chip that you would find in, in an Arduino um, before they switched over to ARM. So this is an AVR8 Atmel microcontroller and uh, a clock crystal, uh, battery input, a uh, few trans, uh, transistors and resistors to create a constant current source. And the reason uh, I have a constant current source is that these meters are deflected by an amount of current. And so by turning on and off the current source really quickly, I can create different amounts of, of current in aggregate or on average that cause the meters to deflect at different angles depending. So as the microcontroller is keeping time, it will change the amount of average current that goes into these meters, causing them to rest at different positions. And that's how, how they show the time. So microcontroller goes here. Um, the way this circuit board is designed, um, even if you don't have a case mm -hmm. in mind, you can just mount the meters directly oh, to nice. the circuit board. So you know the very easiest thing you can possibly do is just mount um, you know the hours meter here and the minutes meter here. There are different gradations, so you can actually get any combination of quarter inch spacings from about like three and a half inches up to eight inches or so. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I like to suggest is that you just cut out uh, like a cardboard from a picture frame that you bought at a, at a store mm -hmm. and mount the meters into those. That'd be nice. And then, you know, you've got these nice meters on the front. All this bit is all hidden behind. And uh, you've got something you can just set up on a mantle or, or on a desk somewhere. So do you have to program the microcontroller? No, uh, it comes right out of the uh, little Manila packet with all of the code already on the arm or on the on the microcontroller and you just solder it on following the 30 page instruction manual and at the end uh, you know in as little as 15 minutes if you're really good at soldering and follow, following the instructions you'll have a working clock. And how easy is it to solder? How many components are we talking? Um, it's it's on the order of about 20-25 I'd say. Uh, some of them are <laughs> funny enough aren't actually required. I put some extra components on there to make it easier to program as an Arduino. So it does work as an Arduino device. It has the Arduino bootloader, all that stuff. So this is the uh, big components bag. And uh, so it's like Lego. Yeah, kind of. <clears throat> okay, so what we've got here is a pre-programmed microcontroller, Atmel AVR, uh, AVR8. Uh, in fact, I think it's at Mega 168V. Uh, battery holder for two AA batteries. Um, for what it's worth, this design is probably one of the lowest power clock kits that you can find. It'll run for over a year on two AA batteries. Wow. Uh, it could be even I better. It's going to be worse, actually, considering it's all based on resistance. Uh, no, because there really isn't much that's dissipative in the design. That's so so there's, cool. there's really very little place to burn power. Um, the battery holder is so, wired up oh, to, yeah. um, you've got this DC yeah. plug, which kind of goes like that. And then these are the variable resistors that are used to fine tune the position of the meters. Oh, Since they're analog, okay. they're only so, accurate. Is that how you set it? No, it's not how you set it. It's more a matter of calibrating the analog meters because they're only really pre precise to about 2%. Mm -hmm. And temperature variations will actually cause the needers, needles to deflect a little bit. Oh, cool. So if, if they're outside, you know, they're going to kind of move around a little bit depending upon weather. But in a house or in an office, um, it's very stable. That's fantastic. The one caveat is you need to bring your own serial adapter. So if you plug in a serial adapter, you can connect to it via the Arduino software and program it uh, that way. But right out of the box, uh, right out of the kit bag, 
Um, so it's like running a sketch. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in fact, you know, the, the whole design is open source, the circuit board, the sketch that operates the clock. It's all up on my GitHub repository, uh, github.com slash sharebrained. And uh, yeah, you can download it, hack on it, do whatever you want. Much more stuff. Come on, everybody out. There we go. Okay. So three micro switches. One is used to advance the hours. So you just click on this thing until the hour meter says the right thing. Uh, another button that does the minutes, and you click on this until the minutes needle is set to the right point. And then this is a reset button. It's actually not necessary, but if you're going to do Arduino programming on the on the Cronulator kit, it's nice to be able to reset uh, cool. when you want to load new code. A uh, whole bunch of resistors. A lot of these go into the current source. Uh, a couple of these capacitors, along with the crystal, are used to generate the 32.768 kilohertz clock, which is used to keep the time. Sure. There's four transistors, which also factor into the current source, and then a couple of just general purpose decoupling capacitors, which are used to keep the noise on the voltage supply down so that the circuit functions properly. Well, so how did you end up uh, bringing this to market? What, what was the inspiration behind the clock? Did also, you wake up one day like, I'm going to make a clock? <laughs> Um, it was it was more interesting than that, fortunately. Uh, I have a friend of mine who he uh, he and I were working together at the time, and he had this meter that he pulled out of some old equipment, and posited to me, "Well, could you possibly make a clock out of this?" And I was thinking, you know, one with one meter, I'm not sure you could ever really read the time off of it properly. But maybe if you had two, one that did the hours and one that did the minutes, that might work. So I went home and I kind of prototyped it in, brought it in. He thought it was really cool. And then began to realize, you know, this would be a really great way to teach people how to solder. Um, the circuit's very simple. It's pretty easy to understand how it all works. If I were to document it all up and create a nice circuit board and maybe, you know, kit it all into a couple of bags, I could sell this as a product, see what happens. So this is one of two meters that comes with the kit. Um, you can also, I've known several customers who've bought their own meters from various sort of, you know, auction, vintage, mm -hmm. estate sales where they've gotten them out of old equipment. Um, it's a little bit of extra credit because you've got to go and figure out like what the voltage or current of the meter was, it, what it was originally designed for. And, and sometimes you have to remove components, like there's usually like a shunt resistor or something you have to pull out. But uh, one way or another, you can make the, another meter type work. And then you change out the face? Yeah, um, so you can leave it like this, but then you have to sort of deal in metric time. Yeah. <laughs> metric I, I had a, a chemistry teacher back in high school who uh, had a metric clock, which was kind of cool. So you could do wow. kind of a metric clock and just leave this meter in here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everyone will hate you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the common way to, to deal with this is um, to pull out the metal face. Uh, it's retained by two screws in here. So you pull out the metal face. And then I, I like to just go and print out on an inkjet printer. I, I provide templates for doing this. Nice. Print out a, um, a new design, maybe with your own font, uh, however you want to do it. Cut it out with a pen knife and then use some, like a glue stick. Mm -hmm. Just kind of do a glue stick on the metal face, glue the, pa the um, paper that you printed out. Yeah, to that and then stick it on. Yeah, insert it back into the meter, tighten down the two screws and you're done. Every once in a while, people run into trouble, like, um, yeah. you know, maybe the paper isn't completely flat and the needle kind of rubs up against it, but, you know, you usually just pull it out and push it down a little bit more and you everything's fine. Over? Sure. Yeah, these are the, these are the um, terminals on which the... Uh, and those just screw in? Yeah. Are those made to... There we go. Yep. That's what I'm talking so, about. Waka waka. Well, yeah, so you can mount two meters, you know, just kind of on there. One here, and then they just kind of hang oh, out. Wow. That's fantastic. Uh, so I did that, and I was really kind of nervous about like really going into business doing this. Uh, I made the mistake, which was actually a very good mistake, of emailing I think Phil Tyrone at uh, on the Make blog, and he loved it and immediately posted it to the blog. And suddenly, I had like fifty orders, and so at that point, I was in business. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, so, and so this is like actually pre-Kickstarter and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was just fortunate that, you know, somebody really took an interest in the product and basically booted me into doing a real business. Um, it's good to have somebody who will just sort of push you or goad you into doing the right thing, even though you think you're not ready. It's just, you know, sometimes you need someone to give you that little shove off the cliff. <laughs> nice. 
Well, where can people uh, get these and, and how much are they and what, what kind of skill does it take? Um, so the kit sells for $49. Um, I sell it on my website, sharebrained.com. It's like harebrained, like, you know, the rabbit. Uh, <laughs> um, and as part of my product testing, my wife, who's a sort of a user interaction, user experience designer, uh, I had her guinea pig the, uh, the instructions. And without having any prior soldering experience, she sat down and in about half an hour following the instructions, was able to put together a, uh, an operable kit and she plugged it in and it worked. So, you know, with no prior experience, if you're really looking to get into soldering uh, and start messing around with electronics, um, you're pretty much guaranteed success. And frankly, anyone who's had problems, who's emailed me, we've always worked it out. You know, maybe they had a bad solder joint, uh, maybe one of the parts went bad. That happens sometimes. Uh, I always make sure my customers wind up with a working clock no matter what. So, no worries. That's super cool. Sharebrain.com, right? Sharebrain.com, yep. Okay. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show each week right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben continues his work on the Raspberry Pi laptop. Don't forget to go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's ultimate gaming system as well as other builds from the show. This week in the Hack Shop, we are having a special on the Ubertooth One. That's right, a special $5 off with the coupon code. And get this, it's Uber, 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 Uber. So five Ubers in a row. Get $5 off your Ubertooth One for the next week. Once again, our deepest gratitude goes over to you guys for your support of Hack 5. Thank you, because we really couldn't do this without you. And I do want to mention, of course, Hack Across America continues on. Darren is up in Eugene or somewhere up there right now. He's going to all the events, all the conferences. We're also going to be going to DEF CON in July, so definitely check out hackacrossamerica.com. And of course, we value your feedback. Always feel free to email us, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you think. Give us some comments about what you want us to cover. And don't forget, you can always follow everything that we do at hack5.org slash follow. I just got back from E3 and my Twitter is on there so you can follow every convention that I go to. With that, I'm Shannon Morris. And of course, for Darren Kitchen, who's on the road, we're reminding you to trust your technolust. <laughs>